Hello, my pottery friends. It's Sue again with Salvaterra Pottery, working by myself during our shutdown for the coronavirus. So today, I am going to work on sugar and creamer. So I thought I would teach you how to make a sugar and a creamer. And this is what we're working on. This is the creamer with a little pulled handle. I like a pulled handle where it's wider at the top and skinnier at the bottom with, and then a little curl, cute little spout. And this is the sugar bowl, cute little lid. It has a fitted lid that sets inside. And this is in our mist glaze. So I throw the two pieces, the two main pieces at three quarters of a pound and then the little lid at a quarter of a pound. So let's start with our creamer first with our three quarters of a pound of clay and see how it goes. All right, so our sugar creamer is still quite a popular little piece. I kind of find it surprising that people um, still really like the sugar and creamer because I'm not that formal of a person. I thought most people would be a little bit more casual, but maybe they just enjoy displaying them on their kitchen table. But we still sell a whole bunch of sugar and creamers, so we make them. All right, so there we go. Three quarters of a pound, nicely centered on the wheel. And I'm going to start with just one finger, going straight down the middle with my left hand, and my right hand is supporting the clay and keeping it centered. So straight down the middle and then pushing over to the side. And I am pushing at an angle like this. All right, I'm going to smooth out the bottom a little bit. Here we go, first pull from bottom to top. All right, and press on the top. Told you before I'd like to keep my fat at the bottom really clean. Personal preference, a lot of folks don't do that. Um, there are as many ways to throw a pot as there are potters. So my teacher, she would taught us the basics and then, and how she hold, held her hands, but then she let us spend a lot of time on the wheel figuring out our own technique. And a lot of things I do out of personal preference that I just kind of figured out myself after, like I said, she taught us the basics. And I studied at UNC Asheville while I was working there as an administrator. So my um, teacher is long gone. She, I got her at the end of her career and when she retired was when I went out on my own. And then she probably lived about 10 years after that and then kind of passed away. But she was still my teacher even after both her and I left the university. Her name was Elma Johnson true artist in many, many mediums and consider myself very fortunate to have gotten to learn from her. So, shout out to you, Alma. You gave me an incredible gift that I will only be able to repay you by passing on to others. So, so you can see I'm starting to create a shape already um, as I'm pulling up and fitting out the walls. Now I'm really starting to create that shape. So, always working on everything from top to bottom. So we're getting close. The closer I get to refining the shape, the slower I make my wheel go. Started out fast with centering, and then as we get closer and closer to the final shape, I slow it down more and more. So, some of you might be asking, well, what kind of a wheel are you throwing on? This wheel is like 40 years old. No, it's probably older than that. 
I bought this wheel when I was still a student at UNCA. I bought it for $300. It was 16 years old. The gentleman I bought it from wanted to be a potter and then he decided that he didn't. And so he had about 80 hours on the wheel and he said, and uh, then he kept it in storage for 16 years. He thought he might come back to it, never did. So he advertised it through UNCA and I was the fortunate one to get it. And so this is one of two wheels I have. I've had very few problems with it. Um, actually, I've only had to replace one part the whole time I've had it. And I've had this wheel for more than 25 years. So as you can tell, 25, 35, 40, more than 40 years old wheel. It is a Shimpo. It's a quarter horsepower Shimpo. And it is a workhorse. It really, really is. So if you can find one of these old Shimpos on eBay for a reasonable price, grab it. Because it's, it's been great. Not a problem with the pedal. Nothing. Alright, so I like this little egg shape. I like to leave a nice big rim for me to add my spout on. So there you go. Oops, a little spot I want to clean up here. Really pretty little shape. Okay, so let's put on the spout on it. I put the spout on it right after I throw it. Left finger down and then the right finger like this. So I'm going to pull up with my right hand and go wet my finger and then I'm going to do a little swoop, 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 back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, gently, 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 stretching that clay. And then I like to squeeze it together like that and even make the top rim touch as I'm doing it. Because what happens is this starts drying, this will open up. And I might even go back a second time a little later and make that tight again. But I don't know if you can see that. There you go, right there. And so that is our little creamer. I will pull the handle tomorrow and attach it like that. So let's move on to our second piece. We've got a little bit of a cold, so excuse me. Yeah. Probably get clay on my face. All right, so here's a little trick. When you're doing a piece with the lid, do you throw the lid first or do you throw the piece first? And for the longest time, I used to try to fit the lid to the piece. And then somebody told me, throw the lid first. Ingenious. It's much easier to fit the piece to the lid than the lid to the piece. So I'm looking for my measuring tool. You want to get one of these little suckers. I, wrote, I This is probably the one I bought when I was at school, but um, used it all these years for measuring. So here we go. The lid is maybe a little bit over a quarter of a pound. And I do this particular lid different than all my other lids. Never been taught to do this this way. It's just how I do it. Um, it's just an easy way to do it. So here we go. A little piece of clay. Go ahead and center it. Sometimes smaller is harder to center than the big stuff. Okay. I can't even see it because my hands are all around it. All right. So there we go. I'm making like a flat, flat little pancake. I think it might have a bubble when it. it's not centering perfectly. Okay, so there we go. Nice and flat. I'm gonna put a hole down the middle, all the way down to the back. Clear all the way down, hollow piece. And then I'm gonna push over to the side to where I'm almost to the edge. And now I'm gonna pull up press down. It's almost like making a closed form. All right. I'm going to do it again. Here we go. Clean up my bottom because it's my thing. I just like working with a clean bottom. 
Oh, doesn't everybody like the clean bottom? Yep. Ha, ha, ha. All right, so you can see where my top is a little uneven. This tool is wonderful because it's got a needle tool on the end that pulls out. So I'm just going to hack that off. Keep your hand steady. Slowly go in. Oh, look at that. Top's even again. All right. So. All right. I'm going to collar this in. Just slowly push this in. Slowly push it in. And I'm actually making my hand on top. It's not touching yet in the center. Okay, so we want to get as much moisture out of where it's going to come together before we actually push it all the way together. You kind of want to get it dried up. A little tip I learned from a friend of mine very, very recently. All right, collaring in the rest of the way. Once it's touched, touching on the inside, you've got air trapped in there and it is really hard to change that shape. So get the shape the way you like it before you close it up. Okay, closed up. And then I like to put a little bit of detail in this lid handle. So I run my finger across there and I run my thumbnail across that. Gives it a little definition. Run this under the bottom. All right, I'm gonna take this mud tool sponge rib thing, run it across there. There we go, I'm gonna flatten it out a little bit. Just shake the eyes. So, these have a habit of cracking up underneath when they come off. But if you catch it quick enough, you can patch it the next day where the crack is, or where it's gonna be, add a little extra clay in there, and that resolves the problem. Put a little button up, up underneath it. All right, so that's my lid. Easy little lid. I don't have to flip it over or anything and put a handle on it later on or a knob. Okay, so I'm gonna measure the width of this. Okay, that's the width of my lid. I'm gonna cut it off and put it aside. Now I'm gonna throw the base. All right, another bat. Here we go. This is also three quarters of a pound. So, centering the clay, centering the clay, centering the clay. All right, feeling good about that. Take my rib, clean up the bottom. Nice and clean. All right, here we go. Smaller pieces, I just take my middle finger Go straight down the middle. My right hand is supporting the clay so it doesn't go off center. And then once I get down to a spot I like, I start pushing over to the side. Push, push, push. All right. Here we go, first pull. As I was told, most pots come from a cylinder. So the first thing you need to learn how to do, make a cylinder. <laughs> When I first started learning, first thing we learned, throw a cylinder, and we had to cut them in half and show our teacher that the wall could be relatively the same thickness from bottom to top. Beginning air, beginner air is leaving the bottom really heavy and getting the top really thin. The key is to learn over time and practice, practice, practice how to get it basically all the same thickness. Beginner's pots will have a heavy bottom. An advanced potter will have really nice weight to their piece. You won't pick it up and go, ugh, that's heavy. All right, time to start shaping this piece. Once again, I'm going to start working on that 
bottom and pushing it in. You get that beautiful egg shape. And the water out of the left. Out of the bottom there. You leave the water set in the bottom of your pot. Sure enough, it's going to crack. Alright, here we go. I'm slowing the wheel down, starting to refine the shape. Alright, I'm going to do it again. And the shape right now is basically the same shape as the cream roll was. Which makes it a matching set. Good. Alright, I'm just going to keep refining it until I'm happy with the shape. I don't use a rib a lot of the time. I like just using my fingers. Alright, so now I'm going to collar. Oop, better take that water out of the bottom first. I'm going to leave it in there. Alright, collar it in. It does change the shape a little bit. I'm going to give it a little bit more height. There we go. And to give it a little bit more grace, I'm going to push that foot in. There. See how that changed that shape so much nicer. Alright. Now, I'm going to start making, I call it a gutter. I don't know. A spot for the lid to set. That's a starting place. Let's measure. I think it's still too small, but better start too small than too big. We're close. We're close. Alright. I'm just going to open it up just a little. Open it up. Pour it underneath and press on top. Alright, let's see what we got. go just ever so slightly bigger and then we'll have it okay so let's say I make this pot and I pot and uh, it dries and the lid is too big well you can sand the lid down a little bit to make it fit yep that's a good fit okay I'm just gonna clean up that edge with this sponge rib mud tool thing so it's all nice and smooth. Just a soft little touch along there. Wonderful. Okay, cut it off. And there you go. Here's another key. I'm a production potter. So I don't just throw one. I throw a dozen, or two dozen, or three dozen at a time. So, let's say a couple of the lids don't fit. Well, then you swap them around. Try to get which lid to fit which. And hopefully you end up even. Not always, though. Okay, so... Here is our sugar bowl and lid. And here is our creamer. So another time, I will show you how we pull handles. I've got an easy way to do it. Um, little cheat for y'all. Maybe we can do that next time. So that's our sugar and creamer today. Um, next session, I think I'll actually do um, large casserole dishes with lids, and you'll see the difference between this little lid and how I do it and how I do a bigger lid. Because a bigger lid, I actually throw it upside down and then it gets trimmed the next day. So I hope that was helpful. Appreciate you watching. This is Sue, Salvatera Pottery out of the Asheville, North Carolina area. Hope you'll stop and look at all our work on our website at salvaterapottery.com. Thanks so much. See you next time. Bye.